It's an enormous privilege to be giving the Royal Gold Medal to Fry Otto. He's always been a hero of mine. In the 60s, when I was at architectural school, he was building that amazing German pavilion at Montreal. And prior to that, he was inspiring us with his tented structures. He has had more influence, I believe, than any other engineer or architect in the last century on contemporary architecture. He's a man who's played with architecture and engineering. He's had fun with it. It shows. It's light. And it was the lightness that made such an impact. My, my reaction basically was, uh, it's obvious, of course. Uh, hasn't he got it already? Uh, it's, uh, it's as if Marlon Brando had never been offered an Oscar. There's a tendency to, for us to see engineers as people who prop up our ideas, and it's a completely wrong way of looking at it. Engineers and architects were absolutely together. The question is, is Fry Otto an engineer or an architect? He's both. I have never met many geniuses. I think none of us have. But I've worked with one, and that was Fry Otto, and he's a genius. There's nothing really very much that, that needs to be done in that field. And... Uh, you know, everybody who comes after him will we'll be filling in little pieces, but the, the main work has been done. Well, I'd describe him as a researcher, an inventor, and an, a great instigator of solutions, particularly architectural solutions. And it's out of the process of invention that he's really driven forward architecture, I believe, and engineering. I'm just so fantastically glad that one has got an opportunity to congratulate him in, uh, after, you know, you know, having spent my life copying him, trying to learn from him, um, and just of living with him. I had to be a soldier. I was a pilot in the last war in the German air defense. <clears throat> Between my 17th and 19th year, I have seen German cities burning and it is a very strong first semester for an architect or city planner to see a whole city burning. You can never forget it. And later on I had the opportunity to work as architect between my 20th and 22nd year in France, in prison of worship. But I started with friends in prison of worship to think about how we can use less material for building, but also to use the material in a technically better, but also more beautiful way. And it's much easier to build at first a model and to discover your mistakes which you are doing on the ready building. Shigeru Iban wants to use an other type of structure uh, which uh, we did for Essen at the World Exhibition. The secret how the model is built, you have to look from underneath. Okay, but we do not know if the thing will go on. Nobody knows. I think the first thing is that he did so much, and he's doing so much. I mean, if you look at the list of achievements from uh, tents uh, to uh, net structures, pneumatic structures, uh, trees, umbrellas, you name it, he's done it. The most important for us was the cabinet structure for the German pavilion in Montreal, where we firstly used a pre-stressed cabinet and out of 10 millimeter thick steel cables and, and um, covering an area of about 10,000 square meters. And with this knowledge, we could build the Munich thing. I was passing at Munich Stadium the other day when I went on a business trip to Munich. And that structure, I was sitting in a car, rainy day, and suddenly, with a corner of my eye, you know, I suddenly had a glimpse of that building, which is now how many years old? And it's still, you know, absolutely breathtaking. He has got a little streak like me that, nah, he doesn't trust the engineers, so he has to <laughs> try himself. And now, 
he actually experimented with the buildings. He allowed the building to move. He, that was unheard of. And I had some experience, 1962, I made my first study in Essen with these so-called uh, grid shells. And for Mannheim, we developed then a grid shell, a pretty large one with a free span of 80 to 80 meters. And, uh, and using lattices of 47 millimeters to 47 millimeters. I was the site engineer for Mannheim. It was one of these typical projects that you come across with Fry, where the engineering science really needs extending in order to produce the solutions to Fry's inventions. We have been just only three weeks ago over in Mannheim. Ian Little was coming over with a proof engineer and we tested the structures. Just wood and a very thin skin. The skin has the same tension as uh, 25 years ago. And so we have been happy that this experiment was going good. And the other experiment, like the Munich roofs, they also are still standing in a very good way, so I'm happy. We, we've uh, are often done bent and curved structures, most especially in the grid show, the Downland Grid Show at the Wealden Downland Museum, which we did. We were, of course, how could you not be influenced by uh, Otto? But we got Otto, we got our Otto direct <laughs> because our engineers were uh, Bira Happel, Michael Dixon, John Harris, who were, uh, had worked absolutely directly with Fry. Hook Park was planted in the year 56, as I remember, and the trees has been very slender, no tree was cutting out. And going through this wonderful country, with the ground was blue from blue bells with uh, Richard Burton and uh, Ted Heppert, and we discovered why shall we not use the wood which we have to take out anyway? It's just like working with somebody who's had, you know, double the experience that most people have had. Um, and he's going on developing that experience, but he's willing to share it with you. He would always find some way of pushing it back into the context that we were working within. Pretty nice experience. <laughs> One of the architects that we spoke to uh, while making this film said to us that you, Fry Otto, has done everything. There's nothing left to do. <laughs> do you agree with that? No, I, I'm not agreeing with this. I think I started things. I tried to push things a little bit forward. A very, very small bit, but so much has been done. Done in all directions. At first, of course, against catastrophes. There has been done very much. Uh, earthquake, floods, and fire, and other catastrophes. Of course, the biggest enemy of buildings is man. Of course, um, and architects are always a very peaceful family. But so many questions are open. You can go through history, um, and certainly in modern history, and see how it has developed on the back of people like Fry, Bucky Fuller, and so on. And for the Pompidou Center, uh, it, he put me in touch. when I went to him first, and he said, not, not, uh, not me, I'm too busy. And uh, I went to Ted Heppel, who I'd met through him. And if through that, of course, we did the Pompidou Center. We won that competition. So there's a link to the Pompidou Center, and certainly a link to the way that we approached it. And you're working on a design at the moment for a station here in Stuttgart? Yes, this is a very strange thing. I invented for this um, a new method to make holes in for daylight and for ventilation and combine them with a single column. But until now, we do not know if we will build this. 
What about Fry Otto's influence on the dome? It seems to me, I mean, the dome is, is a vast tent. I think you can see it everywhere. The, yes, you're quite right. The dome is probably the, the closest because it again encloses a very large area with a tiny amount of material. Um, and you know, t again, tensile structures. I've been talking tensile structures ever since I suppose I first read about uh, the relation between energy and enclosure. Uh, and uh, he certainly is one of the great disciples of modern architecture. But what would be your sort of message to students now studying architecture or engineering? Never give up. Always to think and to solve the questions of today. And not looking so much into fashions, but to realities. And always stay in truth. An architect knows exactly what truth is, and he knows if he starts to lie. <laughs>